So the next step in our warm-up exercises is to have it so that the cat doesn't just bounce on an edge, but that it actually reacts to something that we create. So we need to create something called a fence. And right here where the new sprite is, you'll notice that you can choose a sprite or the paintbrush says paint a new sprite. So that's what we're going to choose. And there's a brush here. There's a number of different things about this editor, but I just don't want to go into the details of it yet because it might be overwhelming. I'm just going to choose a random color. And you'll notice that there's scroll bars here, which are not always that helpful. If you hit the equal sign, it zooms out to 100% or full size screen. And then I'm just going to go ahead and create a fence. And make sure that your fence crosses over again. Okay. Now it's okay if your fence is not totally centered on the screen. What we'll do is we'll just click on it and drag it so that you can see all edges of the fence in your uh, game window. And actually I'm going to shrink the cat down just a little bit. So you'll notice there's some choices up here. I'm going to click on shrink and then click, 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 click a whole bunch of times on the cat and then click one time somewhere else. So there's my cat and there's my fence. And so now I have two objects or two sprites. Actually, I'm just going to call this fence. And it doesn't really have a rotation style, so I'll just set it with the dot there. Okay, so now I have a kitty cat and I have a fence. And I'm still using my costumes tab here, so let's go back to the scripts tab. Make sure I'm on the kitty cat, and there's my scripts for my kitty cat. I can tell because I have a little picture of the cat right there. And so now, instead of if on edge bounce, which I can just put back here and throw away, I'm going to make my own if. So I go to the um, sort of yellowish orangish control palette and the fourth one down is an if. Now you could get confused with an if else. We will use an if else later on, uh, but we're just going to put that back. For now we're just going to use a plain old if. And what we want to do is we want to say if uh, something is true, then do an action. And so we can use our baby blue sensing area. And we're going to say if we are touching a color, you'll notice how this is a diamond shape-ish. And this is diamond shape-ish, so they go together. And then in this color, that's not the color that I want. So I just click on that color. And then you'll notice that it's changing wherever my, the, the finger of my mouse is. So I'm going to put the finger of my mouse right there. So now it says if touching the red color, so I can do that again, by the way, that if I wanted this sort of um, yellowish brownish color, but I don't, I want red there. So that's just an easy way to keep changing the colors. And if that is true, then I'm going to turn. So if I go back to the dark blue motion palette and I can just choose a turn. So inside the mouth of the if, and I'm just randomly going to choose 68 degrees. Now you can choose uh, any number between 0 and 360. Um, you could even type in more than that and it will just subtract it from 360. So it's not all that amazing. And so I'm just going to move that into the forever loop. And so now forever, so I'm looping, I'm going to move 10 steps. And if I'm touching the fence color, then I'm going to turn a number of degrees. Now this may or may not work, so don't panic if it doesn't. Um, we'll just give that a run. Awesome. Now it's kind of doing a little jiggly dance. Oh yes, there you can see mine did a little jiggly dance. It got caught for a little while. That's not a problem. We're going to fix that in the next video.